her own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Glory to you. Oh, Lord, glory to you. Kalisas Mera, please be seated. I'll just say a, a brief word or two about today's feast. Uh, this is one of the most beloved feasts, I think, in the Orthodox Church, the Feast of the Presentation of Christ to the Temple. And uh, if you listen to the Orthros hymns, there's a, a, a really a dancing melody. It's a waltz that they sing. And maybe Adam can sing for us later again as we're taking communion, some of those hymns, just so you can hear them. And you say to yourself, why would the church be so almost like skipping and dancing with joy at this moment? And uh, I don't know that I have the answer for that, but I think there is this lovely sense that our Savior has come. Our Savior has come. You say, well, don't we feel that at Christmas? Well, yes, but again, try to remember in a human sense that uh, child mortality was a real thing in those days, especially then, but also even now. So for a child to make it to their 40th day, that was considered a very big deal. It was a celebration. Now, even today, to be honest with you, I learned that when nations are counting the, their infant mortality, many of them don't even start until after the 40th day of the child's life. They don't even count those first 40 days as anything. In other words, if the child doesn't make it to the 40th day, they weren't even born. That's how they count it. Of course, we don't do that in America, but in other countries they do that. So it skews their, <laughs> their mortality rates. But this was a thing that would have been worrisome to any, anyone. And when you finally made it to your 40th day and you can sort of lift your own head and and survive, then the church, uh, you can imagine the joy that was held at the temple at that time as Mary brought her son into the church, or that, rather the temple for the very first time. But now there's also another reason, of course that's the human reason for rejoicing, but there's also another reason that here is the maker of the law, the giver of the law to Moses, now entering into the temple that his law itself had constructed. You know, how did Moses how did they know how to construct the temple? They were given direction by God, and here is the architect of that, entering into the temple for the first time. And there are many other reasons to rejoice. I mean, think about it. We talk about those turtle doves and how they are made an offering. And you say, why is it two? Well, I suppose it's two because one is to symbolize the man and one the woman. And to say here, in order for us to have a child, we had to sacrifice a part of ourselves, something beautiful, so that we could conceive a child and, and see him born. And that, of course, that's very instructive too. And then they, they present it to the temple. They present their child. And then comes Simeon. And Simeon is the most happy person perhaps we've ever seen in the scripture up to that point. And again, he's almost skipping and dancing. And how old is he? Well, we don't really know how old he is, but the church has the opinion that he's over 200 years old because he was involved in the translation of the Septuagint, that is to say, the making of the Bible from the Hebrew text to the Greek text several hundred years before Christ by the Hebrew people themselves in the city of Alexandria. So anyway, this very, very righteous and holy man knows by the Holy Spirit, according to St. Luke, that the Lord, this one that had been prophesied, is now coming, coming to the temple. And he's going to be there to meet him. And so, as old as he may be, as tottering as he might be, he comes out to greet the Virgin Mary and Joseph. And if you can imagine, a man of that age uh, must look like no one we've ever seen. We've never seen a person that old before. <laughs> we might think, oh, well, we would recognize a person that old. I don't know. I think that uh, certain parts of our body continue to grow, even in old age. So perhaps he had very large ears or a very large nose, or maybe he was very stooped. Who knows? But anyway, he comes forward, and he wants to hold that baby. And for me, that's one of those moments that takes my breath away, having had children of our own. Can you imagine you have this tender little 40-day-old infant and you entrust him to a tottering old man who can barely hold himself upright, and now you're going to give him your baby to hold in his arms. And she did. She gave him to
to this man. The Virgin Mary, even though she was so young, she had great discernment and she knew this was a holy moment. And so she transmits the baby to Simeon and he receives it. And in that moment, he sees so far ahead and so far behind, he realizes that this is the one that had been promised from, from Adam and Eve. From Adam and Eve, to be honest with you. You think that the Christ wasn't prophesied then? He was. I can tell you about that later, not to, not to bother you with it, but just remember what it says about the serpent, that he will strike, uh, strike the Lord, and the Lord will crush him with, with his foot Anyway, so there's a reference to that even in the book of Genesis. So all of those prophecies fulfilled and this holy man Simeon can see that clearly and he knows them so well. He's a one who knows the scripture and so his heart is leaping for joy but he also sees it farther ahead. He becomes a prophet himself in a way and he says this man was set for the rise and fall of many and the a sword will pierce your heart, he says to the Virgin Mary, and he will cause a discerning for the hearts of many. In other words, many people, their deepest thoughts and feelings are going to be revealed because of him. And that's a scary thought for us, you know, when those things are revealed. But it's for the healing of the human being, of course. So all of that is happening at the same moment. And the Virgin Mary, those words were directed to her. And we have to ask ourselves a simple question. Why were, not, why were they not also directed to Joseph? Well, I think the simple answer is because this holy man understood that Joseph was not the father. He understood in the Holy Spirit that God himself had miraculously fashioned a body, a, a being from the Virgin Mary. And God was present in that baby. So this is what we celebrate today. All of these wonderful things 